was able to prove that R strain was transformed into S strain. So that genetic material called DNA was transformed, like from it was transferred from S strain to R strain and made R strain which was non-virulent into virulent, thereby killing the mice. So another proof for DNA as a genetic material came from the experiments of two more scientists called Hershey and Chase in 1952. Dear students, welcome back to session 3 of this chapter called Molecular Basis of Inheritance. Myself, B. Shobarani from the Department of Biology, Vidyashram Pre University College, the Temple of Excellence. Hope you remember in the last session we studied about DNA. As we know that DNA is one of the nucleic acid and it is made up of three very important components that is the deoxyribose sugar with four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine and phosphoric acid. We also studied about the nucleosome model. What are we going to study in today's experiment? You can see in this, in today's, what are we going to study? In today's session, by seeing this rats, you can make a guess that yes, in today's session, you will be studying about a very important experiment done by Frederick Griff and the experiment is called Frederick experiment. Why is this experiment done by the scientist? As you know, the in most of the organisms, DNA is the genetic material that is responsible for the hereditary characters. So in, with this experiment, Frederick wanted to prove that DNA is the transforming material. So the transforming principle was put across by Frederick Griff by taking the example of this mice. Now let us study as to what does this experiment all about. Frederick Griff carried out a series of experiments as I said. He wanted to prove that DNA is the material or the it is a transforming principle to bring about the changes. And the experiment in the bacteria and the, the bacteria which he took to conduct the experiment was the streptococcus bacteria which causes a very serious disease called pneumonia. And that led to the discovery of bacterial transformation that is Frederick Griff carried out a series of experiments in the bacteria called Streptococcus pneumoniae which causes pneumonia fever and that in turn led to the discovery of bacterial transformation. So there are two forms of bacteria which he uh, came across. One is called the S strain bacteria and the other one is called the R strain bacteria. And yes, strain bacteria is usually capsulated and R strain is non-capsulated and this S strain is virulent and this is non-virulent. What do you mean by virulent? That which causes disease in mice is called as virulent and the one the bacteria which is not going to cause disease in mice is called as non-virulent. So he discovered two types of uh, bacteria, two forms of bacteria namely rough non-virulent R strain that does not cause pneumonia and smooth virulent S strain that causes pneumonia. So he conducted the experiment like this. So virulent bacteria when it was injected, here you can see the mice died. Why did the mice die? Because of pneumonia. So the virulent bacteria that is the S strain uh, killed because it carried the pneumobacteria called uh, streptococcus pneumoniae and that is the reason why so the mice died of pneumonia. Here you can see the non when the non-virulent bacteria is injected into the body of the mice it remained healthy. So this was the first experiment what he did. Now let us see the remaining part of this experiment. As I said, Frederick Griff carried out a series of experiments in the bacteria called streptococcus 
pneumonia and that led to the discovery of the transformation principle and he discovered the two forms of bacteria the one called the non virulent r strain bacteria and the virulent s strain bacteria and s strain is disease causing bacteria and r strain is non disease causing bacteria so what did he do so here you can see frederick griff injected the r strain to the mice so first in the first step let us see one by one in the first step what did he do frederick griff injected live r strain to the mice as we know that the r strain bacteria is non virulent and obviously the mice were alive so r strain when it was injected into the body of the mice mice lived so that is the first one second one what did he do he injected the live s yes strain to mice they died of pneumonia that is s strain injected into mice the mice died in the first step what did he do he injected r strain into the body of the mice and the mice survived because r was non virulent but what did what happened in the second step he injected the virulent s yes strain into the body of the mice and the mice died because of pneumonia so in the third step what he did do he injected heat killed s yes strain what do you mean by heat killed s yes strain when the s yes strain bacteria is subjected to heat then obviously when that will become non virulent so they were alive that is s yes strain heat killed bacteria so the Uh, the dna of that particular bacteria was non functional so s yes strain that is heat kill bacteria when it was injected into the mice then the mice lived so first step r strain injected into the body of the mice mice lived second step s yes strain when it was injected into the body of the mice mice died because of pneumonia third step he injected the heat killed s yes strain which was actually disease causing but it was subjected to heat but when it was heat killed s yes strain bacteria injected into the body of the mice the mice lived then what he did do next he cultured he cultured a mixer mixture of r strain he mixed actually he cultured a mixture of r strain as well as with heat strain together and then injected that culture which contained what both r strain plus heat killed s yes strain so this was the one so what was that mixture mixture of r strain and heat killed s yes strain then that was a strain heat kill plus r strain live injected into the mice the mice died why did the mice die because of pneumonia so actually r strain is non virulent heat killed s yes strain was also non virulent but how did the mice die because there was a transformation of the r strain into s yes strain though it was heat killed the genetic material Uh, found in the heat kill s yes strain bacteria was capable of transforming the r strain into s yes strain and obviously the mice died see imagine with this very simple experiment he was able to prove the transforming principle that dna is the genetic material right so griff did not identify the chemical nature of transforming material but his experiments laid the foundation for the discovery of dna as the hereditary material as i said all the uh, the in the almost in all the organisms gene is the genetic material and is responsible for the hereditary characters but that was proved by frederick griff by this very important experiment which is called the griff experiment so what did he do in the first uh in the first step virulent bacteria so mice died of pneumonia non virulent it did not die but first time what did he do frederick griff injected r strain into the mice mice lived second step r strain injected into the mice mice die s yes, strain heat killed injected into the mice mice lived then what did he do he took a mixture of s yes strain that is heat killed 
plus R strain injected into the mice, mice die. So why with this experiment, he was able to prove that R strain was transformed into S strain. So that genetic material called DNA was transformed, like from it was transferred from S strain to R strain and made R strain which was non-virulent into virulent, thereby killing the mice. So as I said, Griff did not identify what was that material that brings about the process of transformation, but he was a scientist who laid down the foundation for the first study that the DNA is the hereditary material. Avery MacLeod and McCarthy continued as I said the Griffith experiment to identify the transformation material responsible for converting R strain into S strain. So what did they do? They purified the biomolecules that is the protein DNA and RNA from the heat killed S cells to see which could transform live, live R cells into S cells. So heat killed S strain. They added an enzyme called protease, live R strain, and there was no transformation. Second, heat kill, heat kill, yes strain. They added RNAs plus live R strain, there was transformation. But third one, heat kill, yes strain, DNAs, live R strain, there was no transformation. So in the first case, protein of heat kill S yes, strain uh, is not the genetic material and hence there was a transformation of the R strain into S yes, strain uh, because of uh, in absence of in absence of what protein in the second case RNA of heat kill S yes, strain is not the genetic material and there was a transformation of R strain into S yes, strain as uh, in absence of RNA. But in the third case, DNA of heat kill S yes, strain is the uh, genetic material because DNA is digested with the what? With the enzyme called DNA's enzyme with R strain and there is, has, hence there was uh, no transformation in the third case. So it was proved that it is the DNA which is the genetic material which brings about the transformation. So that was about uh, MacLeod and McCarthy who continued Griffith. So here what was the conclusion of the experiment? That is the protein of heat kill S strain is not the genetic material as there is transformation of R strain into S strain in the absence of proteins. So RNA of heat kill S strain is not the genetic material as there is transformation of R strain into S strain in the absence of RNA and DNA of heat kill S strain is the genetic material because DNA digested with the DNAs mixed with R strain was unable to transform the R strain that is R strain into S strain. And Hershey Chase experiment. So another proof for DNA as a genetic material came from the experiments of two more scientists called Hershey and Chase in 1952 who worked with bacteriophages. What are bacteriophages? Virus which infect the bacterial cell is called as bacteriophage and the bacteriophage on infection injects only the DNA into the bacterial cell and not the protein code. So the bacterial cell treat the viral DNA as its own and subsequently manufactures more virus particles. So this is how he uh, conducted the experiment by taking the radioactive element. Now let us see what was the experiment. So they made two different preparations of the phase. So in one, the DNA was made was made radioactive with 32 phosphorus and in the other, the protein coat was made radioactive with 35 sulfur. So these two phase operations, one was uh, 32 phosphorus, radioactive element called 32 phosphorus, the other one was 35 sulfur. So these two phase preparations were allowed to infect the bacterial cells separately. Then soon after the infection, the cultures were gently agitated in a blender to separate the adhering protein coats of the virus into the bacterial cells. So what happened? The culture was also centrifuged to separate the viral coat and the bacterial cells. So thereon it was found that the phase containing radioactive DNA was used to infect the bacteria uh, um, and it got injected into the bacterial cell. So, what was the idea about all this experiment? That DNA is the genetic material and it is not the protein. As the protein coat was separated and what was that which brought about the transformation? It was the DNA material. So here you can see the 
So he took the protein coat in solution to phase DNA, supernatant, then you can see the radioactive as I said, he took radioactive element that is 2, that is 32 phosphorus and the other one called 35, yes. So with this experiment of, uh, um, uh, that is Frederick Griff, then MacLeod Avery, McCarthy and Hershey and Chase, uh, it was proved that DNA is the genetic material. Hope you have understood the concepts what I have explained in today's session. So I'll be back in the coming session with some more concepts of this chapter that is the properties of genetic material and DNA as, as a genetic material. The properties of genetic material and DNA as a genetic material. So till then, goodbye and thank you.